so this is going to be James M. Murray. Who's James M. Murray? He's the director of the Secret Service, who, as a matter of fact, just gave his resignation. So that's what it'll be about. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So James M. Murray was born in New Jer in Jersey City, New Jersey, and he attended St. Rose uh, High School. And he earned a bachelor's degree from the University of Scranton and a master's from Seton Hall University. Now he uh, began his law enforcement career as a special agent with investigator with the United States Department of Transportation. Then in 1995, he joined the Secret Service as a special agent in New the New York field office where he investigated cyber-enabled financial crimes and served as the, as the agency's representative for the FBI NYPD Joint Terrorism Task Force. In 2001, he transferred to the Presidential Protection Division, which is hard to say three times real fast, but they safeguard the president and his immediate family. And then 2005, he was promoted to assistant to the special agent in charge of presidential protection. Okay, moved up a little bit. 2007, uh, Murray became the Secret Service's liaison to the United States Congress and all entities on Capitol Hill, and he served as the operational site supervisor for multiple national uh, special security events, including the inauguration of uh, presidential uh, pres the president, Barack Obama, in 2009. Then afterwards, he became the resident agent in charge of the Secret Service's Atlantic City resident office and then 2012 murray became the assistant special agent in charge of the james j rally training center in laurel maryland remember that because 2014 he became then the acting special agent in charge of the secret services washington dc field office until 2016 then 2016 to 2018 he served as deputy assistant director of protective operations during which he led combined agency efforts for the presidential campaigns ahead of the 2016 u.s presidential election and uh, the presidential transition and the inauguration of president donald trump okay but on January 20th, 2017, Trump's Inauguration Day, he returned to the James J. Rally Training Center as Special Agent in Charge. Then, in 2018, Murray became the Assistant Director of the Office of Protective Operations and was responsible for the planning, coordination, and administration of that agency's global protective mission. And who are they? They're of uh, the Office of Protective Operations. Interesting. Their global mission. Then, in 2019, Donald Trump removed Randolph Ailes, you may remember the headlines, as director of the U.S. Secret Service and named Murray as his replacement. Okay. Then in uh, July 14th, 2022, it's reported that members of the U.S. Secret Service erased text messages from January 5th and 6th, 2021, shortly after the Department of Homestead Security Inspector General had requested those after she had requested those as part of an investigation into the agency's response to the 2021 United States Capitol attack. So says a letter written by the Inspector General to congressional congressional leaders. And then on July 20, 2022, the Inspector General of the Department of Homeland Security uh, yeah, notified the Secret Service that her office was investigating the disappearance of text messages and emails regarding the siege of the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021, characterizing their disappearance as an ongoing criminal investigation. She further directed the Secret Service to cease any internal investigations into the matter of failure of the agency to preserve the missing records. 2022, Murray has announced his retirement from Secret Service as Secret Service Director, but on August 1st, he takes the role of Chief Security Officer at Snap Inc., which is the parent company of Snapchat, you know, where the messages disappear instantly after you um, send them. Okay, so we're going to use this Grand Lux Tarot and delve into James 
M. Murray. I mean, he's gone from one sweet pot to another. He's had an amazing career and he's um, been successful at everything he's ever tried to do, it looks like, to the extreme. So, James M. Murray. I mean, the people that Trump is associated with, that doesn't describe them. Okay? So if you're thinking, does he have, is he in with Trump somehow? He's not the typical villain that Trump, uh, uh, in Trump's circles. That's all I can say. So let's see uh, what we can find out about James M. Murray. And I'm trying to think of a new way to use a Celtic cross. So we may just play this by ear as we go. So James M. Murray, his life, his intentions, his uh, career. What can the cards tell us about that? first, let's have a moment of meditation. Okay. So I want to know is he on the up and up? Is he um, one of the good guys? Let's do three cards real quick on that. James Murray, are you one of the good guys? Three cards. One, two, three. James Murray, are you one of the good guys? Okay, first card. Well, this is a king of swords. If I didn't draw any of the card, this would say, yeah, he's the king of swords, truth, justice, rules, and law. That's who he is. But let's see what the next card up is. Ah, and this is the king of cups. This is pretty good for him. So you would want this guy with this much resting on his shoulders to, uh, to also be a compassionate king. And the last card is the ten of swords, the end. Very appropriate because his career with the government is over. And now he's out of the government, but with a great job and a Snapchat. So, yeah, he's one of the good guys. Interesting. All right, so now, for this Celtic cross, I want to know a couple of things. I want to know, was he doing what was he thought was best for the, um, for the uh, Secret Service? And um, was he wrong about that. In other words, um, he, was he trying to hide up, hide things for the benefit of the Secret Service? Um, which is a loaded question, because he may think that hiding those things which embarrass the Secret Service would also be uh, something that would be an embarrassment to the country, which maybe he sees as part of his his remit, not to bear, embarrass the country. So I kind of want to think of a really, really great way to ask that question. Did he feel like he was betraying the country when uh, he allowed those text messages to be deleted? Because let's face it, he did allow that to happen. Okay? Did he believe um, that this was bad for the country or good for the country when he did it? We're going to do six cards and then another four. So, let's go right into here. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, James M. Murray. Amazing. Okay, first card, signifier card for this read. Uh, uh, was did he believe he was doing this for the benefit of the country? Wow, Ace of Coins. Yep, all the value. Yeah, he did. Uh, challenge to that was the government. Wow, <laughs> this is really amazing. Yeah, so it, he was doing this for what he thought were all the right reasons, honestly. And the challenge to it was the fact that he had to maneuver uh, around or with or because of the government. Remember, this is the, an oath to the Constitution, really. 
and the challenge was the current, because remember the government changes as we have an H new uh, president, uh, that government changes. And so that was the challenge to getting this done in an honorable way, the government. <laughs> the uh, basis for this, wow, the, uh, this is the emperor, okay? This is number four of the major arcana. This is the emperor. This is Trump. He was the problem. He was the, the core bottom, the, the bouncing off point at the bottom uh, was Trump. In the past of this, King of Wands, wow, these are strong cards for this guy. So the King of Wands, Wands is actions, plans, motions, forward movement, and uh, fire, getting a thing done. And uh, in the past is this King of Wands. So this is telling us that whoever was making these plans, getting things done, coming up with these ideas and executing them uh, was the king uh, of that craft, but, but in the past. So maybe he felt like he could not be effective anymore because that was in the past. The sky of this reading, wow, another king again. This is amazing. The king of swords. The What you are shooting for is truth, justice, rules, and law. And that was his ultimate highest goal uh, was to um, aim for that. Wow, this is interesting. I think this guy's the real deal. And uh, the uh, final uh, outcome for the first part of this reading for James M. Murray uh, was he doing it for the country? Is this uh, five, six, seven, eight of cups, which is having to walk away from something, leave something behind that has a little bit, um, uh, uh, maybe a little bit uh, spilled here, uh, and it's a regretful uh, departure, is what it is. And that's the final outcome of this. And that's exactly where he is. He's departed the FBI, but he's got a great job. Um, so he was doing this for what he thought were the right reasons. So for these last four cards, these last four cards, will he cooperate with the January 6th committee? Okay? The self of that very question, will he cooperate with the January 6th committee? Is this Empress? Okay, fruitful. Okay, this is a yes. If I didn't draw another card, this would be a yes card. He will. So number three of the Major Arcana, Everything that you need to make a thing happen, all the the lush um, support that you need. So yeah, he will. Um, he will. The um, environment that that's in, however, is is this five, six, seven, eight of wands. Yep, that's true. So many things coming at you at the same time. So this eight of wands, the environment of all these issues needing to be coordinated simultaneously. That's the challenge or the environment that this uh, cooperation uh, is in. The uh, hopes and the fears for this, with this six of coins, is getting the balance right, distributing the wealth appropriately. That's what the six of coins is. It's making sure that you're doling out this worth, this value, in an appropriate manner. It's so interesting that he would feel that that's uh, how he has to deal with the January 6th committee, where most of us would think that, no, you just need to give everything that you know. You don't worry about how it's allocated. But... The final outcome for James M. Murray, good guy or bad guy, it looks so far like he's a good guy, is um, this five, six, seven, eight of swords feeling trapped. Of course he does and he would. He's trapped by all of those rules, all that justice, all of that law, all of that truth has got him trapped. But as we know about this card, the eight of swords, you're never really trapped. You just have to tell the truth and not try to manipulate the outcome of the truth. But they don't see it that way. These people are, if you don't want to call them politicians, but they're career um, government people with that always in the back of their mind. Very interesting. So to read it again quickly, um, good guy or bad guy? Uh, was he doing it for the good of the country? Yeah, it starts out with a great big ace of coins. And it's channeled by what? Of course, the government that was in place. And it's underpinned by who? Of course, Trump, the emperor. Okay. Um, in the past, uh, uh, James M. Murray was the king of plans, king of getting things done, but that was in the past. That His effect, um, efficacy is over. In the sky, though, what he's aiming for is king of swords, a repeat card. Okay, King of swords, that's was his aim, of the most honorable. And uh, the challenge was now having to leave something behind of a lot of value, emotional, personal value to you, which is what he's done, but he's gone on to a great second uh, life, you know, in, in Snapchat, but also that secretive kind of uh, communications information. The um, self of this question then for the rest of this Celtic cross was, um, uh, will he uh, cooperate with the January 6th committee? We get the Empress. Yeah. Everything they need to know. 
He's there to give up. But what's in the environment of all of these issues, this eight of wands coming at the same time need to be coordinated. And the hopes and the fears is that all of that value gets weighed out appropriately. And then the final outcome is really feeling um, imprisoned by all of these truths, justice, rules of law. But of course you can get out of that, just tell the truth. So that's what I've got. Well, that's everything, but tune in next time because it's going to be um, Ryan Gosling, the human uh, Ken doll. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. Oh, say so. This is a Grand or Tarot Grand Lux, Tarot Grand Lux, another Cairo Marchetti uh, deck. This guy is just a machine putting out these cards, but they come in a great box and uh, they've got a really useful uh, guidebook as far as the divination is concerned. It's easy to read and it's, you know, handheld and, you know, it's just another of uh, Cairo Marchetti's version of uh, tarot cards, which all seem to be pretty cool. Um, they're easy to use and they've got a nice kind of a matte finish that doesn't slide out of your hands too easily. And uh, so I do this so you get a chance to look at the cards and see how they are. Maybe you don't uh, buy a lot of cards or look at a lot of different cards, but if you watch my channel, you do. Haha. <laughs> so there we go. Good way to get to your energy all over the, all over them, and um, and so I don't know, I think that kind of makes for a better uh, read uh, when everything's all said and done. So here we go. These uh, tarot grand lux. It's some funny thing that I always want to say grand lux tarot, and um, I bet everybody does that. But anyway, we'll use these and get this going. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. One, two, three. You really make a big difference. Thank you.